Hey, what's up everybody? This is Greg Doss with GD Nine Attorney Pro State Consultants. What I want to let you know, as always, is I'm not an attorney. I don't license to practice law. I do not practice law. What I've done is study the law and tell people what I've learned and how I've gathered the information. So I don't give any information advice to apply to your specific case with general information regarding the law and lawful principles. So if you think you might want some legal advice, I would highly encourage you to seek out a licensed bar associated attorney in your state and from there be legally advised. Now, what we're going to talk about today is um, child support hearings. And what I was going to do is give you a couple of examples uh, of the many that we have, but these are just a couple of examples of how child support hearings can go. And I'm going to play you one guy's hearing and then we're going to come back and listen to how the very same uh, attorney for the Florida's Department of Revenue, who's actually the moving party in these cases, how that same attorney acted differently in a proceeding with me. Now, I'm not going to uh, interrupt the proceedings or give a narrative uh, to the extent that I break down each and every component, but I want you to listen carefully to how both of us engage in the, these hearings how we respond to the hearing to the hearing officer and also the attorney and then of course you know, I can let you know what happened in the end ultimately it's not a secret I've shown before and I can show again uh, that the cases are terminate and this is a case that they actually in my situation tried to bring back and tried to justify we essentially came to a stalemate again um, and I haven't had any more issues with that situation. Uh, I'd like to actually continue to pursue more and helping more guys because some of these uh, injustices are well-established uh, law. That would, uh, let me say this again. There's well-established law that can help you address many of the discrepancies involved with your case. So I'm gonna say that, you know, confidence matters. Now you're gonna hear me speak kind of confidently, but what matters more than confidence, people, is the law. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get to the cases, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll wrap up, and we'll get up out of here. Attorney General, Ms. Reyes from the Department of Revenue. I'm the hearing officer, Lila Stella. Mr. Davis is before the court. Mr. Melton did Ms. Melton did not appear. Mr. Davis, can you state your name for me? Thank you. Sir, I don't, there's no reason, let me swear it. Do you want, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, sir? Thank you, sir. Proceed, Mr. Runner. Assistant Attorney General, Albert Arena for the Department of Revenue before the court on the department's motion to correct a clerical error. We were before the court in April of 2019. The court is well aware we add up the support delinquent leave and the support arrears, which is on the first page of the clerk's affidavit. Okay, Ms. Melton? We have two cases today. Yes, that's a different case. That's before Mr. Coffey. Okay. That's the next case he's going to have. For the record, can I ask one last case on the same day as I guess with the two different judges? You don't know, sir. I didn't set them. The Office of Attorney General set them. Well, how is that possible? You'd have to talk with their office. They Normally, your cases are separated because of the case number. They're, each one of us are assigned to a different set of case numbers. So, Mr. Coffey is assigned to your other case number. I'm assigned to this case number. Why they set them at the same day, I don't know. Uh, yes? I don't know specifically in this case, but I know in general when they set cases, they're supposed to, if they see that he has another case, try to set it on the same time at the same early morning or afternoon so a person doesn't have to take two days off of work and comes twice. So I'm assuming they follow their standard policy just as a, it's basically as a courtesy to the respondent so they don't have to take off two days of work. 
So that's Ms. Servina's. I, I can't say specifically that was what was done on this case, but that's what journaling has done because I noticed they were set on different days. So I think when they set the second case, and I don't know which one came chronologically, they saw the first one and they just tried to do it in a manner so you wouldn't be more inconvenienced. Proceed, Mr. Servina. Uh, for some reason, when my office totaled up 48391.61 pursuant to the affidavit submitted at the time, and 6621, they got a total of 49000 uh, The amount I calculated is $55,012.61. So it was an error in the clerk's calculation number? Correct. It was an error in us adding the clerk's calculation because in no way is 48 and 6 come to 49. So I went ahead, sir, and I printed you a copy of the account history they handed me that day, and it's clear they made a math error when they calculated. So that's what they're here on. Also, I'm going to give you the judge's name that you're assigned to in this case and the judge's assistance name and number because I saw that you filed a motion to vacate. That's not going to get said unless you move it along. So I'm going to provide both those documents to you, Mr. Arena, if you could pass it down. That's the copy of the account history from that day as well as the judge's assistance phone number for you to proceed forward on your motion to vacate. So I saw that you filed an affidavit denying the arrears on 6 12 19. Is there anything else you'd like to argue? Yes, ma'am. For the record, um, what is this, this guy's name again? Mr. Arena. And Albert Arena. And you're, you work for who, sir? I work for the Office of the Attorney General. Okay, My correct. client is the Department of Revenue. All parties, please, Roger Gets. Well, ma'am, for Gets. the record, how did you come to this amount? What evidence are you using? The certified affidavit from the clerk of the court. Yes, ma'am. That would be... This. What I just handed you, the copy. Yes, ma'am. That would be this arrears. Can I show this to you? That of would course. be this affidavit of arrears that you... I don't know. I, you'd have to show it to me. So pass it through. Mr. Arena has a, must review first. If he has any objection to me seeing it first. Uh, this is from May 28th. If the court wants, I have one from from June 18th, but no objection, it's a... Okay. Yes, and what this says is your child is now, I think, emancipated recently. Yes, September 21st of 18, and your arrears delinquency as of May 28th, 19, pursuant to the clerk of the court's affidavit you just handed up, was $55,012.61. So is that the evidence you're using against me today? The one I handed you is the one that was yes, the error. Is that the same as that one? It's not the same exact one. You had this printed on a different day. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to pass that one back. This is the evidence you really need me? That is the evidence that was submitted at the last hearing showing you an error was made. Now, he has a new one today. Do you want to submit that? My question to you is who signed this affidavit? The clerk of the court. It's right on there. You yes. see the signature? Yes, ma'am. Would that be Tierra Cook? You'd have to pass it back to me. Whatever name is on the bottom, that's who it is. Is it Tierra Cook? Okay, that's the clerk of the court. Whenever, whenever you credit if the, I can't read her name, but it's, it's notarized by the clerk of the court. Deputy clerk. So I can't tell you the exact name because I can't read it. It's my next question is, okay. is who is the party in the case? Is Tierra Cook going to come in and swear that I owe this amount for the record? No, sir. She's not. The party in the case is the petitioner, Ms. Milton. If, uh, Ms. Milton is may the petitioner. I, may I? She's the petitioner in the case. May I see something just so the record's clear? Basically, that's incorrect. Hold on one second, I Mr. To that. Okay. What do you say that again, sir? You said, who's the party in the case? May I speak? Yes. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I, I have Ms. Melton is the petitioner. What do you want to say, Mr. Arena? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Objection to the respondent talking over my objection. The court said I can speak. I asked the court to tell the respondent to be quiet until I speak. One second, Mr. Davis. Mr. Arena. Objection to the, the respondent keeps talking to over me. Objection. Sir. Objection. Mr. Arena, what do you want to say? Thank you, ma'am. Department of Revenue, if I understand the respondent correctly, is stating that the arrearage affidavit is inadmissible. So the record is entirely clear. I'm pointing out Florida Statute 61.181, paragraph 6, 
says a certified affidavit from the clerk comes in without other proof. Therefore, we do not have to bring the deputy clerk up to testify to the authenticity of the record. Okay. Mr. Davis? May I talk now? Yes, you may, sir. So what evidence are you using today against Ms. Rich's affidavit that you just presented today? The clerk of the court's arrearage affidavit from the prior hearing is what I'm giving you as the evidence showing you that was added up wrong. So that is the evidence. Yes, sir. So now I'm using, there's another deputy clerk signed the signature? So which one is the party in the case, ma'am? The party in the case is Ms. Milton, sir. Okay, ma'am, for the record, did Ms. Milton independently file this case on her own? Sir, you would have to go research that through the Department of Revenue. I do not know. From my records, ma'am, it says the Department of Revenue on behalf of Ms. Rich. Yes, it is. Exactly. So how is Ms. Milton a party in the case? She is the individual party the state is representing for interest. That's what I just said, ma'am. Yes. Is she a party in the case? Yes, she is, sir. I don't see that anywhere where she's a party. She clearly is. It's the Department of Revenue on behalf of Ms. Milton. Correct. Ms. Milton is the individual party, sir. So, correct. And the state is representing on her behalf. So she independently filed this case on her own? You will have to go determine that through the department. She subrogates her rights to the department when she either signs up for their services or receives some kind of state assistance. Exactly, ma'am. Who is the other party on this? I think I answered you, so I'm not going to answer again. It's the Department of Revenue on behalf of Ms. Milton. That means the Department of Revenue filed this, ma'am. That doesn't mean that Ambria Milton filed this. And she subrogated her rights to the department to file. Okay. So what evidence are you using for this case? You're using this? Well, I'm going to take today's account history into evidence next. So who's presenting this evidence? I am handing you a copy of what was given to me last time to prove to you that they added the numbers incorrectly. So that's what I provide you. But today I'm going to take the next account history into evidence. Mr. Arena? For the rule, ma'am, I object. And who's presenting this evidence? Is this guy? Mr. Arena is presenting the evidence of today's current account history. Yes, ma'am. Well, he's already sworn in. I can cross his name. He does not need to be sworn in. He's not a witness. So can I cross his name under the penalty of perjury? No, sir. You may not. That's the account history they're going to submit into evidence. Please review it. Ma'am, for the record, can a party introduce evidence in a case if they're not a party? The attorney can, sir. The attorney can? Yes. And he just cited the statute that allows him to do it. Okay. May I cross his name under attorney? No, you may not, sir. And how come I cannot cross? You can ask him a question, but you cannot pass his name. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes, please. Sir, for the record, do you have firsthand knowledge of this matter or anything of this case? Objection is under the rules of evidence. That's the attorney. The case, I am not a witness. I also believe the rules of professional responsibility keep me from being an attorney or being a witness in a case. Okay. Here's his answer. Review that account history, Mr. Davis. And make your objections and then pass the document up. Ma'am, for the record, who is this signing this signature? The deputy clerk. Is the deputy clerk a party in this case? No, she is not. I've already answered that, sir. Same objection I made earlier, ma'am. How can somebody introduce evidence into the case if they're not a party? Sir, I am done. I've already ruled. Ma'am, you're violating my fundamental due process rights. And that's fine, sir. I've given you all the information. As well as the chance to be heard by a judicial officer, ma'am. Mr. Davis, I've already answered your questions and you keep asking me the same questions. Okay, do I have the right to be seen? I'm accepting the account history into evidence. You may keep that as your copy. Mr. Arena, your request. I object. Would the court get my copy of the clerk's affidavit from today? I handed it to him to review. I don't know if it did. I'm going to allow him to keep that and I'm going to have another one printed. Okay. Okay. Can you make a copy of that one quickly? Yes. I prefer that. So, once again, ma'am, who is the party in the case? Can you state that? I've already said that, sir. Objection. You're telling me that? Sir. Objection. Sir, there's no question before you. Objection. Miss, can I ask you one more question? Objection. Sir. Can I ask you a question? No, you may not. Just wait one second for the copy. Why? Is it over with? No, it's not over with yet. 
One second. How come this guy is getting this Sir? attitude? How come the guy with this attitude banging the table Sir? and you're allowing this in the courtroom, man? Sir, Objection. because you keep uh, talking over everyone. You allow it to be the I ask that his last five interruptions be stricken from the record so they do not appear on any transcript. Man, you had I'm going to overrule that. I want his objections on the record. Yes, man, so you, allowed, you, allowed me to, you allowed me to talk Sir, to Sir, can you stop for, for a second until you get the account history? One minute, please. May I answer the court's question regarding the relief the department is requesting? Yes, you may. Department of Revenue is asking this court for an order correcting the amount of the arrears pursuant to the clerk's affidavit, setting the arrears in the amount of $55,021.61. Your objection, sir? How did you come to this amount, ma'am? The form I just gave you in the first from the first hearing indicates clearly how the account is calculated. The account history into evidence, and he was given a copy for today, just so it's on the record. I provided him a copy of his current account history, dated 618-19, signed by Heather Coker, Deputy Clerk, $55,012.61 owed as of 618-19. It is all arrears now. The child has emancipated. His payment is $367.95 a month. Sir, anything else you want to say, Mr. Davis? Ma'am, does this deputy have first-hand knowledge of the case? Sir, they, they are the accounting of the case. So you may file any action you wish, and I gave you the judge's information to get your motion to vacate set, sir, because it's been sitting in there. So, so is there anything else, Mr. Davis? So you, you, you already replied to my affidavit of arrears? I see your affidavit. Do you want to hand me anything into the evidence? affidavit of dying, denying the arrears? Do you want to move that into evidence? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I already put that into evidence. You didn't see it? No, you filed it in the court file. That's not placing something in evidence. Okay, I have it if you want me to print you one or you want to hand one up. Yeah, you're going to get a copy of it. Okay, so he's going to hand me up that document. I'll take that in. So for the record, you're stating that, you're stating that Embryo Milton is the party in the case, ma'am? The individual party, sir. Individual party? Yes, sir. What is that, man? She the Department of Revenue, on behalf of Ms. Melton, filed this action. I think I've said it a few times now, sir. Any objection to his affidavit denying arrears? No, ma'am. And I have reviewed that, and I'll take that into evidence for the respondent. Anything else, Mr. Davis? Yes, ma'am. You um, violated my due process right, fundamental due process rights, as, as well as my chance to be heard by a judicial officer, man. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Davis? Is that is that not you didn't hear anything? I heard else? exactly what you said, and I do not feel the same, sir. Anything else you have to say? So I don't have a I don't have a chance to be heard by you just officer, no? sir. That's what I'm assigned to hear. These are the cases I'm assigned to hear. This is my jurisdiction. So at this time, the motion to correct clerical error is granted. Amend the order to correct the arrears at fifty-five thousand twelve dollars sixty-one cents. As of April 16th, 19th. That's it. Hearing's concluded. Mr. Davis, have a good day. Thank you. <coughs> no record. I can't understand how you let this guy come here and bang the table like he's some time to start his time himself. How can that be possible? You let this man come here and bang the table like that and disrespect anybody in the courtroom. If I did that, you would act. Sir, your hearing's concluded. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. Take care. Mr. Davis, you have a hearing with Mr. Coffee next. I didn't mean to talk. Oh, him banging the tape on me. No, no, he was apologizing for being. No, sir, I apologize because I didn't speak too loudly. Oh, but that's acceptable for him to do that, right? He just apologized. Listen, we're not here to apologize. We don't have anything to do with that. We're going to step out for the next hearing. We'll give you your copy. Step out. He's fine. You know, I see you laughing. I see you laughing. I came in. He stopped. I'm just waiting for my copy. 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 I'm just waiting for my copy.
Well, we had a lot to digest from that right there. Now, it, it, it's probably going to be pretty uh, clear that I know the, the gentleman um, who filed the action, and, and he didn't do too badly of a job. I think his more of his issues were based upon procedure, uh, but his so a few of his objections were definitely on point. And I don't know why he just kind of quit on. Uh, throughout the process, even though, as you could hear, his children have been emancipated, which means that, for the most part, uh, his license in the state of Florida is going to be okay. He can still file an independent action to challenge the arrears, challenge the underlying order, and do quite a few other things, which is what I kind of figured he'd be doing at this point. Uh, he worked through one of our uh, other uh, consultants, but, um, you know, it's all kind of under our umbrella and again we don't give legal advice we just kind of guide people to do something the things that were similar to what i did in order to get the relief that i was able to get in, in my cases um now what's what was was bothersome and should be bothersome to anybody listening was the behavior of the attorney for the department of revenue uh I'm not going to say what I think he did when he, he uh, made a couple of statements, but I would tell everybody, regardless of your state, go to the rules of professional conduct uh, and learn what the responsibilities of an attorney uh, is and are and what becomes clear violations of the attorney's rules of, uh, of, you know, of the rules of professional conduct as it relates to attorneys. Uh, to include issues involving deceit, uh, misrepresentations of material facts, deliberate omissions of material facts, and the um, also the utterances making making certain utterances that may or may not uh, uh, persuade the court. Now I'm going to tell everybody out here now and give you a case to read in the state of Florida. Go read Gregory versus Rice, uh, and if you need any, well, um, if you need more on that case let me know for sure and i'll uh, pull that case for you and, and send it over to you but it'll speak to the procedural posture for hearings in that case it was for a contempt hearing but essentially procedure is procedure and uh, process is process if you know process it will definitely help you uh, move toward gaining a inadequate remedy now <clears throat> I'm, I was going to talk about some of the questions that I get asked, but I think I'm just going to stick in this video to how confidence matters and how you can move yourself through a proceeding and get your desired results. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be kind of surprising to you all is you're going to hear the very same attorney in the room with me and watch, although the situations were different, he was in there because of the Department of Revenue's filed motion. I'm in there because I thought they told me they were going to try to suspend my license again. Uh, and I filed the motion, which makes me the moving party. And the other issue, the other moving party, we'll get to some of the specifics if you'd like to in another um, video about some tactics, some tactics he could have used that probably would have got him a little bit, a little further along up to him vacating the hearing officer's recommendation which under the state of Florida law, which would have given him the judicial review that he's entitled to. And if you go to Article 5 of the Florida Constitution, you'll find that even uh, administrative uh, orders are immediately subject to judicial review. So, but he was he was close on it. And I think really if he just hadn't given up, he could still come back and get the remedy that he seeks. That being said, we're going to move to my case, which is... Uh, as you see, came a couple of months after his case. His was um, on June the 18th of 2019. This case for me will be held on August the 14th of 2019. I had some other cases uh, involving some other hearings involving the same case, but ultimately, it all is what it is. You know, my bigger thing for those who've been following is I was not going to allow them to. <laughs> I uh, was not going to, I, my, I was just reluctant to give them any money to reinstate a license that they'd taken in properly. I got it back, paid the reinstatement fee for probably more so safety reasons than anything else. 
and they took it, and then I fought again. The judge gave them, made me, made them give me back the license, and <clears throat> you'll hear a hearing involving the license and some other uh, background uh, background uh, issues. Now, what's also interesting in here is because this very same uh, Department of Revenue attorney had irritated me in the past, you're going to hear my enfranchising him to be a little uh, different than what you would have heard me in a judicial process, uh, like the child support hearing, I mean, not the child support hearing, the driving without license cases, the multiple ones, because I'm in front of a judge, and the posture can be different, and the rules within a uh, hearing, a judicial hearing, although similar, you, you have a little bit more uh, professionalism, generally speaking, uh, in a court hearing, and if they make certain violations or errors, you know, you, you'll be able to uh, do pretty well come time for appeal. Uh, in this situation, though, this is these are hearings, and these hearings, uh, once they get reviewed, then they become subject to appeal. But those are things we can get into in some later videos. If there's some issues that you may want me to address, please feel free to email me, and I'll try to make a video address him or make your comments on this video and I'll address some of these issues. And again, uh, if you like to, you'll see the information flash across the screen from time to time. Feel free to support the channel. With that being said, let's get to this hearing of mine that was conducted on August the 14th, 2019. Have a seat, sir. Okay, we're on 03-DR-006755. Ball versus Doss. Mr. Doss is present, Ms. Ball is not. Mr. Arenas, the attorney from the Office of Attorney General. I'm hearing Officer Stella. Mr. Doss is present in the court. Mr. Doss, state your name, please. Chagret Doss. Hey. May, I, may I have Mr. Arenas' uh, full information? If he has a business card, I'd like to have his business card. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Arena, ID yourself for the record. Assistant Attorney General Albert Arena for the Department of Revenue. Do you have a business card, Mr. Arena? Uh, I would ask you not to ask him to ask me any questions. I'd like any questions to go through the court manner's appropriate court procedure. Uh, His name will be in the order, Mr. Doss, that you're going to get. Um, and he's with the Office of Attorney General. He's a senior attorney there. So, Mr. Doss, let me swear you in. Do you affirm to tell the truth, sir? Always. Thank you. And we're here on the respondent's continued petition to contest notice of delinquency and intend to suspend driver's license that was continued from July 3rd, 2019. Uh, I would object to the, the totality of the hearing. Uh, I don't know if the hearing officer has a copy of the record of the judge's order reinstating the license. More importantly, within this hearing and within the order in front of the judge, he declared that the action was terminated. So if the action is terminated, this issue at this point is moved. Okay, it's, Mr. It's Doss, you issue. pass me a copy of that order? Yes, ma'am. Second thing, sir. I, I'm sorry I didn't bring you another thing, an extra copy. And more Come importantly... First, Mr. Arena, one second. You can make a copy of that. And also, I did forward a copy of a FOIA and a Sunshine Act request to the Department of Revenue and the Child Support uh, section, I guess the legal section of the Department of Revenue. Uh, I also forwarded a copy to the Chief Financial Officer for the State of Florida, Mr. Petronas, requesting certain information that should have been made available, uh, I guess, at the beginning of these proceedings. I'll give you a copy. You can copy, but I'd like to have my copy back. And what I'll do is I'll move to as the order states, consider the issue precluded now at this point as a matter of law. Because the judge has ruled on it. Can you and hold off on that one one minute? Let me, he has an, any objection? No, if the court can confirm that this is actually filed with the court then it's the first I've seen it. I do not have a file in his file yet. It's not in there because I prepped the case. Request the matter be continued to make sure that that's an actual order and that it has it hits the clerk. Can we, I'll just call. I will call the clerk of the court. So hold on one second. So let's not go to your next step yet, Mr. Dodson. Well, I, I want some clarity. Is Mr. Uh, Petrinas or Arenas 
Arena. Mr. Arena. Oh, that's easy to, to remember. Is Mr. Arena's position that Mr. Doss proffered a fraudulent document to the court? I'm not sure. I think he just wants to verify that it, it, it's not... He's not objecting because he sees it's an order, but he can't object because it's not a certified order. So let me just check if it's a certified order. Can I and give you an answer, Ms. Stella? Okay, sorry, please have an answer. It's my understanding orders are not into effect until they're rendered with the clerk, so I want to make sure the order is rendered with the clerk. I appreciate that clarity. Okay. And also, Ms. Stella, just for clarity's sake and the record's sake, I asked for a copy of today's docket, and I would refuse a copy, and we all understand that Article 1, Section 24 would allow me to have that, as well as Chapter 119. Uh, I don't think that the lady, up, the, gen the, the gentle lady up front, understood the demand. So, but just for clarity's sake, could I please have a copy of the docket, and if not, we'll proceed accordingly. I'm not aware of any public records request currently before this court may so the department would object to anything other than what is actually said, which is the respondent's driver's license. And in response and to Mr. Arena, I just said I wanted a copy, so I, that's your public records request. It has to Council. be in writing. Mr. No, ma'am. I'm not sure that's correct, ma'am, but I know. It, you right. know I want it. Okay. First of all, you can request that from the Department of Revenue, a copy of their docket. Let me go check on this order, but please do not talk while I'm out, but the tape is on and recording, so one minute, please. Oh, Brenda, I need you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Now, although I said I wasn't going to do this and interrupt and give a narrative during the uh, proceeding, but I wanted to say this, and, and I'm going to apologize because when I find out that somebody that may have spoken to me has come to me and told me about a situation that they may have had in one of these hearings, I tend to take it a little personally. Maybe that's because I don't like bullies and maybe that's the, the, the component in me that has me continuing to uh, want to assist people. Uh, with their difficulties if they can't otherwise afford an attorney I would again uh, tell you to try to seek an attorney for legal advice but this is not the first time particularly within this jurisdiction that I've had people who had issues and I tend to take them personally kind of like the big brother that I am I am a big brother to my brother and I, I, I get a little bit irritated when I think that people are taking advantage of other people because of the other person's lack of information or that their general ignorance of, of law or their ignorance of procedure posture or just they may be otherwise intimidated I, I definitely am not I never have been and if I was willing to fight and die for this country I'll de definitely fight and die for me I hope it, I don't think it's going to become that serious with any child support issue but if you're not willing to stand on your square and uh, fight your your cause you're not going to win you know change is the reciprocity of revolution if you think that people will stop the bully's not going to stop bullying you just because it's the right thing to do the bully doesn't stop bullying you until you punch him in the mouth or her in the mouth and i'm speaking figuratively that relates to these people with the department of revenue but i just wanted to, to clear up something uh, just in the event that there are people out there that are wondering, but that is the same Mr. Arena uh, that uh, I that the, the gentleman before had. And also, as to the request, I got there and there was an issue with the docket. I don't think I either I didn't appear on the docket, but there was a problem with the docket's representation of my presence there on that day. So I respectfully requested the secretary or whoever the lady up front was to give me a copy of the docket. They can refuse to give you the docket, but you can also sue for a copy of the docket because if there is a policy or there's an issue or anything public record, you have a right to that public record. And once you make the statement, even if it's not in uh, writing, they have to uh, satisfy that uh, response, I mean, that request, or give you the legal reason why they are not going to give it to you. So if you say, give me a copy of that, and they say, no, you say, well, what policy or law states that I cannot have a copy of that document there, even if they want to charge you uh, whatever be a reasonable administrative fee you have a right to the copy of that document and there's a you can go look up the legal bulldog i think is what his name was and he's a guy that went around the state of florida just asking agencies for copies of their policy that should be posted or policies that were posted if they refuse them he would just sue them 
you know, you're going to pretty much just get cost out of that. Uh, the cost of filing the lawsuit, uh, probably a declaratory judgment, and then your uh, cost for time and what have you. So that's what you'll get out of it. But that sends a clear message to whomever it is. But let's get back to the rest of this hearing, and I think you'll find it to be pretty interesting. Most likely still in the judge's queue because it was just confirmed on August 12th. Yeah, the, just for efficiency, I realize it's not a certified order ban, but I don't plan to object to it on that basis as much as the court can confirm it is in the system somewhere. I'm, I, I'm calling. So one minute. Well, you, you can't look in that judge's queue. It's not my judge. It's not the one assigned for the much orders. So one minute. No one's answering the phone at the judge's office, so my assistant's going to walk over there. I see no reason that this is not accurate, but Mr. Arena, you want it verified? Uh, I see no reason that. No, ma'am, apparently GMB has that order in his release this license. Okay. I have no objection. Okay, I'll, I'll I, I need objection. to make a copy of this order so I have it for the record. And put it in yeah, the yes, ma'am, I and mean, also, could you make a copy of this and pass it on to the Department of Revenue? And I, did I give you a copy before your request that they should have gotten? Yeah, this is all I have so far. So okay, and you make a copy of this, and you can pass it to Mr. Arena. Uh, uh, your general counsel already has it, because I've already checked to see that they were they received the certified copy. Assistant, make a copy for I appreciate that, Ms. Stella. Mr. Doss, or you just want a copy to give to Mr. Arena? Uh, you, you can place them into the record. I have no okay. objection to so going into the record as well. I appreciate that. Speech. And, and I'll, I'll render, I'll submit another uh, FOIA request for Mr. Arena's ENO and other information. I'll do it uh, officially. I just want the record to know, to know. I'll get it done today. And I expect it post haste. Mr. Everett? One minute. I'm here on a driver's license contest. He's provided a non-certified order, which I'm not objecting to, on his driver's license that was just entered less than 48 hours ago. 
um, in defense. I'm not sure what else we're here discussing today. We're not discussing it. Well, 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 my, my, but I, it's a case law. He's entitled to show the court the whatever, whatever the case law he'd like well, to show. Is but, it, well, isn't that driver's license suspension related to a terminated case, Mr. Arena? Do you have any objection to him filing this matter? If there's an order terminating it, it has not been provided to me yet, sir. That didn't answer the question. Okay. So Stop no. one second. Plus, this is probably your only copy, Mr. No, Johnson. No, ma'am, I have plenty of Okay, copies. so I'm handing back your case law because there's only one issue before me is the driver's license, and it's already been resolved by the judge. So I just want an order that says the matter has already been resolved by the judge. The original of this, would you like filed in the court file? Yes, ma'am. The This statement, would you like filed in the court file that you're providing me? Yes, ma'am. And now I'm going to take the copy of the order, and I'm going to give you back your original, which I think that one might be it. Yes, that's it. Um, I'm going to yes, give Mr. Arena a copy. Well, this is actually a copy. I have the original. I know, but I'm just, that's the one you gave Thank me. And here's a copy of everything. Again, Thank that you, you just filed, Thank and the hearing's concluded as the judges already. Yeah, my original. May I have my original? Yes. Get the copy because my original's already. You have to file so the original. With the clerk. Clerk. I'll do that. I mean, my original. Okay. 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 And this. For the record, we're yes. with you. Just the originals and the copies. Yes. Miss Stella, as always, I appreciate your cordiality, your time, and you all have a great day and a great life. I'm sorry, ma'am. What was the court's ruling? The matter's already been. So, determined by the judge on Are you removing it for the docket? You need an order. I would like an order saying that it was removed from this docket with the parties present as the judge has already made a ruling and is licensed to be reinstated without further costs. Ruling conformed on 8 12 19 by Judge Fuson. Uh, and also, um, number five, um, and, um, the judge, I, I'll get it. I'll submit the uh, the transcript from that because the judge also within the transcript you'll see. Oh no, number two, a letter from the Department of Revenue in 2015 ordered the term the, the, the reinstatement of the respondent's license because they are terminating the action. That being said, you all have a great day, and I expect that information from you, Mr. Arena. Um, you realize I don't work for the Department. You work for me, though. If I, yes, you know Mr. what? Arena. I was going to give him some. Advice on where he perhaps needs to send his request to, but he obviously doesn't want it. Okay. So, okay, hearing's concluded. Try. Thank you. Okay, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, I wouldn't suggest that people necessarily act the way that I, I did there. I, I probably could have done a little bit better, but he, he had gotten, he, he'd aggravated me quite a bit just in general. Uh, and plus, I had previous interactions with him before I found out about what he did um, with who we called Chico before but that being said uh, we found this rules of professional conduct I gotta find out why my Adobe on this computer is not syncing with the Adobe on the other computers because I know I have that service so anyway I don't even care that being said let's do a little bit of a housekeeping since we're now we're pretty much finished and let's go to the rules of professional conduct. You're going to see Florida's rules of professional conduct. I want to show you all something just in general. And I'm pretty sure there's probably some attorneys that might get mad, but I give zero. Now, we've done this before, I believe, where I showed you how to find a particular word in a document. So you got to do control F. Let's do your thing. Control F. Let's find it. There we go. And let's find. I don't know why that didn't come up. It seems to be a little bit of a lag. Maybe the lag is based upon my screen. Uh, the fact that I'm doing this screen share. Okay, let's go here. So let's find out where we can find child support. Client hearing, child support, another final hearing. Okay, look at that. And I would tell everybody to take the time to learn this. Now, this is uh, one of my. The chapters that I, I tell people most often to look into, and this is, and as you saw right there with that child support, 4.4-8.4 of the Florida Rules of Professional Conduct, this is where it comes to attorney misconduct. And I'm not going to go through reading all this. You all see me pulling up here. You can go do it yourself, and you can go find the, the similar provisions in whatever your applicable state is. But I wanted you all to roll down here, and, and I will read, show this for you. And... 
let me give you some context. The first thing is a lawyer shall not. And as you see the shall not part here, it applies to the rest of the document, everything that, that follows. And there's a, uh, a few things, you know, violate or attempt to violate the rules of professional conduct, knowingly assist or induce another to do so, or do so through the acts of another. And you go on down here, there's plenty of other things in here that may apply in other kinds of cases. But since we're on the subject of child support, let me roll back up here. And um, I'm pretty sure you all saw it. Uh, what did I just do? I just missed it. Da, da, da. No, it's just a judge or whatever. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, here we go. It's H. I, I know it's in here. And it's H. A lawyer shall not willfully refuse, as determined by a court of competent jurisdiction, to timely pay a child support obligation or, and then there's some other things. Now, the court can be a competent jurisdiction. But we can get into discussion discussing jurisdiction later. And, and if you listen to the prior hearing, the gentleman made Chico made some valid. He raised valid issues. He just didn't he didn't address them appropriately so that he could set the record properly. But construing it, the judge should have an idea that there may be some other underlying issues that the judge may be uh, required to address if if the issue is properly placed before him. But right there, you see that an attorney can't just willfully refuse to pay a child support uh, order. And I'm not going to say anything else beyond that. You all can glean from that whatever you want. But don't say that you don't know and that I didn't show you. So now, that being said, good people, uh, check on things of issues of attorney bad faith, which is what that went to. And again, I just wanted to give people an idea of some, some live footage of how things have gone inside of courtrooms and how things have been handled. And your your greatest weapon in any proceeding is the law, at least from what I've learned. I'll put it this way. I've learned through my experiences, and I've been in courtrooms, not even including these child support hearings, um, not just the child support hearings, but I've been in court probably over 80 times by myself, 8-0. Yes, as a self-represented litigant. And a lot of my uh, success or my, my knowledge and my ability to cite and find information is based upon more less my uh, intellectual acumen, but based upon the consequence of repetition. You do things enough, it's like shooting free throws. You shoot enough of them, it should become natural and, and come game time. Unless you, And if you're breaking them, you're probably going to break them come game time, uh, despite what we saw Giannis do. But I said to say this, if you put in the time, effort and work, you can get a successful outcome. And I fully believe that. Again, confidence matters. I think we saw that today. The law matters a little bit more. And when you can show that you have the ability to transition from from one point to the other and that you can become intellectually nimble when it comes to dealing with the whoever the people are within the courtrooms or even within these hearings you'll find that you'll do a little bit better uh as far as uh, gaining the outcome that you uh, definitely seek and or desire so as i wrap up this video i'll say again uh you can uh, go to my youtube page which you're probably going to hear already but if you want to support the page we have cash app we have zelle we have paypal Please feel free. It doesn't have to be a large donation. We don't look for all that. We just want to keep this stuff going. And I want to see more guys get the remedy that they're entitled to. And is always imparting. Sometimes it's not about right or wrong. More importantly, it's about clarity. You never reach resolution if you're not willing to engage in honest dialogue, even if that dialogue is with yourself. Take time to hug the person you love and love the person you hug. And on behalf of GD, non-attorney pro se consultants, I'm Greg Doss. To those who know me from a while back, I'm also DJ Squid. And I'm saying peace. I'm saying chicken grease. And people, I am out of here.